Hi, this is Scott Lancer, the Director of Associates for Biblical Research, and we're here today with another exciting episode of Digging for Truth. Uh, Digging for Truth is a, a, a program that investigates and looks into the world of biblical archaeology. Uh, we talk about the work of ABR and we discuss the insights from archaeology as it relates to our understanding of the Bible. And of course, we look at the archaeology because it's, it's giving us strong affirmations of our faith, strong affirmations of the biblical text. And today, in, uh, on a, we are visited today by Brian Wendell. And Brian's on Skype. I almost said, Brian, you're in the studio, but you're actually up there in Ontario. And uh, Brian is the pastor of Island Bible Chapel, and he's also the newest member of the staff of Associates for Biblical Research. And so, Brian, we are really thrilled to have you on the program today. Well, thanks so much, Scott. It's an honor to be here, and of course, it's an honor to be part of ABR. Amen. Amen. Well, Brian, we got to jump right into the topic today because we're going to be talking about the top 10 discoveries in 2018. And the thing is, in 2018, there was a lot of really, really cool things found archaeologically. And uh, we could we could probably do five shows on on if we really looked into some of these uh, other discoveries. But we're zeroing in on the top 10 discoveries. And we're so we're so glad that you're here to, to share these things with us today. So let's get right into the into the subject. OK, so um, uh, Brian, it would be helpful for our viewers if we understood the criteria that you used in selecting these top 10 discoveries for 2018. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Sure, Scott. Well, I. I track about 200 stories a year that come out of the Holy Land in terms of announcements and reports from archaeological excavations. And uh, so in order to narrow it down to uh, each week, I choose one for ABR's current events uh, page on the website at BibleArchaeology.org. And then at the end of each year, I look back and I choose 10 from those. And so in order to make the list, here's what I do. The criteria is this. First of all, um, it must be uh, directly related to people, places, or events that are mentioned in, to, in the Bible or directly related to the composition of Scripture itself. And the second thing is it must be a discovery, not an announcement. There are often announcements that come out that are important announcements, um, but we're just focusing on discoveries that were made this year. So that's my criteria. Very good. All right. Well, let's start with number 10. We're going to be counting down here. Uh, all of these are important, but we're counting down to our number one, the number one greatest find. But let's start with number 10, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll cover 10 and 9 in this, in this segment. So go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, share. Uh, Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Well, number 10 um, was announced in September 2018, and that was the announcement that there had been evidence of the Aramean destruction at uh, Gath, biblical Gath, um, and that it had been unearthed there. And so archaeologists working there, it's the site is called Tel Asafi, um, and they released their excavation report in 2018, and they focused on the lower site of the city, and they uh, had unearthed significant evidence of the destruction by King Hazael, uh, the king of Aram of Damascus in the 9th century BC. And this is interesting because this affirms exactly what we read in 2 Kings 12, verse 17. It says, about this time, Hazael, king of Aram, went up and attacked Gath and captured it. And so the archaeologists excavating there have found evidence of that attack, evidence uh, of the siege uh, system that was built uh, around the site, as well as the defensive actions that were taken by the people itself. So an exciting discovery mm -hmm. that affirms a verse right in Scripture. So that was my choice for number 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, number nine was really cool, um, some high-tech stuff, um, advanced imaging revealed previously unreadable text on some Dead Sea Scroll fragments. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're familiar with the bigger scrag fragments and the bigger scrolls, such as the Psalm scroll, but when they had a whole bunch of smaller ones they couldn't read, they just put them in a bunch of cigar boxes back in the 50s <laughs> and stored them, and they mm -hmm. took them out, and the Antiqu Antiquities Authority in Israel used advanced multispectral multi imaging, and they were able to decipher text, including one little piece 
that was a missing portion from the great Psalm scroll that begins Psalm 147, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And what's really exciting is that there are uh, approximately 19 such cigar boxes of um, of fragments that are yet to be analyzed. And so we might uh, see more discoveries coming out. Yeah, it sounds like somebody was smoking a lot of cigars. <laughs> 30 <laughs> yes, boxes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Brian, let's move right on to uh, great discovery number eight and number seven. Why don't you share those with us? Sounds good. Well, uh, number eight is a bit of a bizarre story, but a really exciting one as well. And that's uh, evidence of the United Monarchy that was discovered at a site uh, called Teleton by mole rats, believe it or not. And so archaeologists from Baralan University have been excavating uh, near Teleton. And the way they kind of came up with that particular site was mole rats will burrow into the ground and then they leave what they burrow out kind of in these piles. And what they discovered were a whole bunch of pottery sherds, which show that the site was occupied so they started excavating there, and they discovered uh, an ancient city that dates to the time of uh, King David and Solomon and afterwards. And one of the places, one of the things they found there was a massive uh, monumental structure. They call it the governor's residency. Hmm. And that particular structure was built um, using huge, beautiful ashlar stones. And uh, so the archaeologists, when they got down to the bedrock, they were able to date it to the 11th or 10th century BC, about the time of King David and Solomon. And they argue that um, this discovery of this particular governor's residency um, demonstrates a certain level of administration that was required at that particular time. Um, and it's evidence of the United Monarchy, the, the big kingdom that David and Solomon oversaw. So that was number eight, some exciting yeah, um, that... stuff there. That is fantastic. Fantastic. Well, now we, we have about a minute left here, Brian. Uh, we want to talk about the first temple era stone weight that was uncovered in Jerusalem. That's right. Yeah. In November 2018, um, it was announced that a small stone weight, little wee tiny uh, small stone, you can see it on the screen there. It was once used to measure the half shekel temple tax during the first temple period. And so uh, this is mentioned actually in Exodus 38, 26, that, that the Israelites were to bring a half shekel temple tax and it was to be uh, in silver. Now, at that time, the first temple period, of course, there were no coins. And so people would bring pieces of silver and they would measure the weight of them using these little beka uh, weights. And so one was discovered uh, it was discovered um, in the city of David's wet sifting project amidst rubble taken uh, in 2013 in some excavations under Robinson's Arch. And so we have a weight uh, from the area around the Temple Mount, um, which, which affirms, again, a detail in Scripture uh, that we see close to the area where people would have had to pay the Temple tax. And so an exciting find found in November. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Well, We've talked about four great discoveries in 2018, and we'll be right back with Brian Windle as we continue this fascinating discussion. In a culture of intense Bible-denying skepticism, Associates for Biblical Research exists to strengthen followers of Jesus by affirming the authority of the Bible. Our archeological field work and original research form a strong foundation in upholding the reliability of the scriptures. For students or anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible, please visit our website and partner with us by joining our prayer team or financially supporting this ministry. And thank you for standing with us. And we're back again uh, with a fascinating discussion with Brian Wendell. Uh, we're talking about the top 10 discoveries in biblical archaeology in 2018. Now, Brian, we uh, covered four of those, and now we're up to, uh, uh, we're, we're coming down in the list. So we're actually coming down to number six now, six and number five. Why don't you go ahead and jump right in. Again, we want to give you as much time to explain these uh, amazing discoveries. 
Sounds good. Well, in October 2018, uh, it was announced that the oldest Hebrew inscription uh, of the word Jerusalem was found. Now, not just Jerusalem in the short form, as we often see in inscriptions, but a long form, kind of the modern spelling, Yerushalayim. And so it was found on a stone column that was unearthed at a pottery production site um, that was operated from about the Hasmonean period to the Roman era. And uh, it reads, Hananiah, the son of Dodalus of, of Jerusalem, of Yerushalayim. And uh, what's really interesting about this is that in the Bible, um, the word Jerusalem is spelled in this long form uh, five different times in the Old Testament. And so what we see with this discovery is that um, it, it affirms that the full modern spelling that that is used, Yerushalayim, was also used in ancient times as well. So that was uh, my choice for the number six discovery. Mm -hmm. And then uh, moving to the number five discovery, as soon as we move into the top five, I mean, the top 10 are great, but to me, the top five, you just get into the really, really exciting ones. That's right. And so uh, number five um, was the uh, royal figurine that was discovered at uh, Abel Beth Makkah. It's 2,800 years old, and um, it was put on display recently at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. An intricately carved head, um, and, it, and it looks like a, a, some sort of a crown encircling his head, and scholars have suggested it represents a king. The problem is we don't really know which king it is because it dates to the ninth century, a time when Abel Beth Makkah, the, the city there, changed hands among various uh, kings. And so it could be the face of King Ahab of Israel. It could be the face of King Hazael of Aram Damascus. It could be the King Ethbal of Tyre, all biblical kings. Mm -hmm. uh, we just don't know which one it is, but either way, it's an incredibly exciting find, and just incredible workmanship on that particular artifact. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a fascinating piece, and it just brings to 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 everyone who sees it a, a real sense of what one of these kings would have looked like, and it it just makes it very very real. Well. All of these discoveries, I think we want to reiterate this at this point, Brian, these discoveries are re uh, related to the Bible. Uh, again, as a part of your criteria for uh, identifying these discoveries as, as being really important is that they were true discoveries, they were their discoveries connecting to the Bible, and they show us that the people, places, events of the Bible, uh, they're affirmed in the biblical archaeological record. So that's very, that's very right. important. Well, let's go move on to uh, discoveries number four and number three, and these are just uh, phenomenal discoveries. Well, they are. Number four is uh, ABR's discovery of a ceramic pomegranate mm -hmm. uh, at Biblical Shiloh, okay. and it was found during the 2018 excavation season. And uh, here's why this is important. Shiloh, the Bible describes it as the center of Israelite worship and the site of the tabernacle for over 300 years. And uh, we know from the Bible that pomegranates were an, a common motif in Israelite worship at the tabernacle. Exodus 28 tells us they adorned the hem of Aaron's robe, and later they were part of the uh, decor at the first temple, we're told in 1 Kings 17. And so this discovery of this uh, amazing artifact, a, a pomegranate, which on its own it just is an interesting discovery, but when placed in the context of its place and its time, and particularly with what the Bible says, uh, it confirms and affirms the biblical description of Shiloh as a temenos, a sacred, dedicated precinct early mm -hmm. in Israel's history. And I should probably note that a peer-reviewed article on this is coming out uh, in the June 2019 issue of the journal Judea Samaria Research Studies, and uh, ABR's Dr. Scott Stripling is uh, one of the authors on that. So an exciting find at number four. Yeah, we. And uh, yeah, I was just going to say, Brian, we were really thrilled at this discovery. This has all kinds of implications, and uh, you've you've outlined the, the most important ones, and that's very very cool. Very, very cool. Well, and, and I was so excited to finally get to see a picture of it because I heard mm -hmm. about it, and then we kind of had to wait until we could officially uh, officially right. release it. And so it's exciting to finally be able to see it and to uh, and to hear a bit more about it. Yeah, very, very cool. All right, Brian, uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, 
uh, our, our third uh, great find there. We're down to number three, I should say. Number three, here we go. Um, number three was the discovery in January last year, the announcement of the discovery of a 2,700 year old um, seal impression that bore the title, the, um, the governor of the city. Mm -hmm. And so it was discovered in the dust of a first temple era structure near the Western Wall Plaza of the old city of Jerusalem. It has two figures on it, and it bears the, the inscription, the, the governor of the city. And why this is really important is the Bible in two places, 2 Kings 23.8 and 2 Chronicles 34.8, describes and names specific mm -hmm. governors of Jerusalem. And now we have an artifact that confirms that that was indeed an ancient title for a position of a person in Jerusalem. Pretty exciting to see that. Th that's right. And, you know, we, we've got about a half a minute here, Brian. Um, you know, the governor, j just having a title like that affirmed in the archaeological record is important. Uh, we're, we're always looking for the, the names of people or some astounding, you know, connection later. You know, later we're going to be talking about the pilot ring. Well, that's pretty extraordinary, uh, the name of pilot. But here you've just got a title. But those things are important, aren't they? Absolutely. And, and to me, what it says is that you can press Scripture really, really hard and bear down on it mm -hmm. and see that even in some of the minutest details, we see that, that the Bible is historically accurate. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're here in studio with Brian Wendell, and we're having a fascinating discussion about the top 10 discoveries in biblical archaeology in 2018. And we're glad you joined us today. We'll be back in just a moment. Bible in Spade is a non-technical quarterly publication published by the Associates for Biblical Research, written from a scholarly and conservative viewpoint. Bible in Spade supports the inerrancy of the biblical record and is a must-read for both the serious Bible student and anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible. Archaeological evidence, properly interpreted, upholding the history of the Bible. Subscribe today at BibleArchaeology.org. Well, welcome back to Digging for Truth. We're here today with Brian Wendell, and Brian is counting down the top 10 discoveries in biblical archaeology in, in 2018. Now, Brian, we are down to the, 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 the second biggest discovery, and this is, I thought this was one of the coolest finds ever. But uh, anyway, let's talk about the, the, pilot, the pilot ring. Sounds good. Well, I, I love when a discovery is made and uh, I don't have to go looking very hard for something that's a, just a no-brainer for the, for the announcement of the week and current events. When this came out in December, it was just an obvious one. Um, it's the Roman ring. We might also call it a, a rediscovery. The ring itself was discovered in the 1968-69 excavations at the Herodium, and, and, and it was just kind of put away with some of the other stuff, but it was recently pulled out and re-cleaned and re-photographed and re-analyzed, and what they discovered was uh, that it was a simple stamp ring. It had the image of a crater, so a wine vessel, and surrounded with the Greek letters that said Pilato, uh, Pilate's name. And given the rarity of Pilate's name in the first century, the obvious question then became, is this Pontius Pilate? And many scholars do believe that it is indeed Pontius Pilate. It's a, a ring like someone from the cavalry would wear, and, and he, of course, belonged to that. Um, we know that uh, from ancient writings that the Roman um, prefect Pilate used Herod's um, mansions when he was in Jerusalem and Caesarea, so he may very well have used the Herodium as well as an administrative center. And what's interesting is the grammar of it, Pilato without an S, suggests that it's something that's being sent to him, mm -hmm. that it was a ring that one of his officials may have used to uh, to stamp things, taxes, and, all, and goods that were being sent to him. And what makes this so exciting is this is only the second archaeological artifact we have confirming that uh, the historicity of Pilate as a, as a person. I mean, we know that from writings, but now we have archaeological evidence. 
Yeah, boy, it, it, is, it is really an amazing thing. And, you know, um, uh, Pilate and Herod must have known each other pretty well. That's what's interesting yep. here. Uh, th this, we, we read the biblical accounts. We, we read about Jesus being, uh, you know, going through his, his suffering, his trial, uh, his crucifixion. And the, someone who is a part of that, uh, and this ring connected with that individual is so, is so uh, fascinating. Uh, well, an important find, an important find. Well, we've got a few minutes here to really focus in on the, the number one find for 2018. And, and I think, uh, you know, we, we really need to uh, um, unfold this one a bit. It's the seal impression of the prophet Isaiah that was found uh, in February of 2018. Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, when this one hit the news, um, the biblical archaeology, uh, archaeological world just erupted, of course. Um, the uh, lead author, Alat Mazar, who discovered this uh, seal impression um, in the Ophel excavation south of the Temple Mount, um, came out and, and, mm -hmm. and basically had analyzed this and, and declared this is likely the personal seal of the prophet Isaiah. It was found um, in the same batch of, of Boule that the Hezekiah seal was found. And um, this one, of course, is, is broken off a little bit, but enough is visible to clearly read the name Isaiah and the first three letters of the Hebrew word prophet, the N, the V, and the Y. Unfortunately, the crucial letter, the Aleph, is missing. Yeah. But because of the oval ring that you can see the outline of, they can reconstruct that, and we can see that there would have indeed been a letter there. Yes. And so um, it, is, it is very likely that what, what was discovered was the personal seal of Isaiah the prophet. Now think about this. In the yes. Bible, Hezekiah and Isaiah are named together 14 times. They, they weren't just contemporaries, they were very close. And so it's not surprising that we would find the, the seal impression of Hezekiah and the seal impression of Isaiah right at the same uh, layer in the same uh, site and administrative uh, center in Jerusalem. And so uh, just an amazing find that was announced uh, in February 2018. And I chose it yes. for my number one discovery of the past year. Yes. And, you know, Brian, it's interesting. That was found probably in a trash, a trash dump, a trash area. And so uh, the things that they discarded uh, back in the ancient day uh, are so important for us today, those of us who work in biblical archaeology. Very, very cool find. Absolutely. And what's really important, too, particularly with these boule, is that, um, that what comes in afterwards is a destruction. Yeah. where the place is burned, and that hardens them for right. us to find them later. So just amazing how it all works together. Very good. Okay. Well, Brian, we have a couple minutes here. Let's just uh, talk a little bit about why all of this is important. Let's give a summary on that. And where can people go to stay up to date on the latest discoveries in biblical archaeology? Sure. Well, I believe that discoveries in biblical archaeology are really important for two reasons. First of all, they affirm the biblical text. They, when properly understood, um, they demonstrate that the Bible is a historically accurate document. Mm -hmm. And really for 150 years, we have had hundreds and hundreds of finds that have shown the Bible to be accurate, even in minute details as we've seen today. The, the second reason is that it clarifies the Bible. It, it provides background to help us understand the context and the people and the places of the things that we read in Scripture. These aren't just fairy tales. These are real stories about real people at a real period in time in real places. And so um, I think it's just really important. It, it doesn't prove the Bible is true. I believe it's true. I do. But that's a matter of faith that I have. And, and what I found is that what I accept by faith is affirmed time and time again through discoveries in biblical archaeology. It's not like a, a brainless faith. The, yes. the Bible describes faith in Hebrews 11 as something that we can be sure of and certain of. And that's how I would describe my faith. Right. And, and biblical archaeology mm -hmm. helps. Brian, we've got about 20 seconds here. Um, where can viewers go to get more information? 
Sure. Well, BibleArchaeology.org, uh, ABR's website, there's a current events tab, and we update that with an, with a discovery every week. And then uh, each month, I summarize the top three on my own site, uh, BibleArchaeologyReport.com, both places, excellent places to stay up to date. Amen. Brian, I want to thank you for being with us today. It's been great to have you on this great excursion into the top 10 finds of 2018 in biblical archaeology. We're so pleased that all of you have joined us today for Digging for Truth.